Hey guys, it's Lamming Rush. Today I'm going to be trying to teach you something that I've never seen anyone try to teach before. So, <laughs> during this revolutionary video, I'm joking. Uh, well, sort of. What I'm going to try to teach in this video is how to read your team, how to read the mini map, and how to respond accordingly. So, what you can see is we're on the map Overlord, standard game. They have got a lot of mediums in this game. We, I, I sort of forgot to look at our team lineup for this replay. So what I decided to do is I tried to go to the 9-0 because I wanted to shoot at their medium tanks in impact where I thought the, mo the majority of their enemy team would go. So yeah, th this game is gonna be interesting because what happens is that they push the beach really, really quickly. So I'm just gonna fast forward it because I don't really consider driving uh, relevant, but I want to talk about the the way that I respond to what I see on the minimap. So what you can see is there's a ton of tier 8 tanks in front of me. I pop up to put a shot into this 4202. I'm a tier 10 heavy tank. I can get away with that. Uh, and the result is that I miss a shot on the 704. Now that happens. At least I got a shot off early. And, um, you know, the 704 makes this really stupid play. You can see I don't expect it at all. I see him poking because I thought he was going to yellow this bulldog, but he just drives past the bulldog or something. <laughs> <laughs> Bulldog is smart to run away from that 704. It looks like the guy is DC'd or something to that effect. We're just going to shoot at him. And um, I, this is this is going to be interesting because what happens is if you look at our 1-2 line, we've got nothing there. Now, at this point in time, I haven't really noticed. I don't really care about the 1-2 line. But what I'm going to eventually start to do is I'm going to start to push the 9 line because I see that it's just tier 8 tanks and I can push into tier 8 tanks without any risk. So you can see this is me just sort of wasting time. I'm trying to wait to see who is where before I try to push anywhere. There's a Hawk 12 that I get a shot off onto. And you can see the Amex 30B starting to push up. So that's going to sort of be my trigger to eventually push up. Now, you can see I notice on the map at A5 that there's an Amex 30B. There's also a T54 at C5. Um... And this is this is the point of this video. The the question I'm trying to answer is when do you know to go back to base? So what you can see me doing is I've recognized they're in our base and I'm trying to pressure this T54 mod one, T34, M41 rev, uh, and, and whoever else is gonna be in their base because what I wanna do is I wanna get to their cap before they get to our cap, right? Because then they could start to cap out. So at this point in time, there's an AMX 30B on cap. I also see a WZ11114. And the WZ11114 is what sort of makes me nervous about this situation because I'm sort of thinking, okay, well, we've got three TDs all in B9. I don't know if I can trust them to actually reset the cap if it comes down to it. So I'm going to make the decision not to push this side because I see how many, how much of a problem our cap circle has become. You can see they've got like eight tanks down there. And, and this is this is the decision-making process. To, to summarize it, in my mind, I said, I cannot push onto their cap faster than they can push onto our cap. So I have to go defend. That's, that's, the, that's the simple question to ask. If you can push onto their cap before they can get to yours, then you wanna push forwards. If they will get there faster than you will get to that, their cap, then you wanna go back and try to prevent that from happening. Because if I put three people on cap after they put three people on cap, obviously we're not gonna win. So you can see I'm making my way back to base. By no means am I rushing about it. We're down five tanks. So I'm sort of thinking, well, this sucks. You know, I'm just trying to get damage before the game is lost. But this is the decision-making process that should go through your mind. It's, it's very easy when you figure out what questions to ask. Uh, and, and so ho hopefully that made sense. You can see we're going back to reset. This is how I've decided to do it, right? I've made the decision to go back. The next question is where do I have to put myself to deal with that? So what I've done is I'm trying to put myself into this sort of bowl where the AMX 30B is, uh, and, and we're just getting shots on people because we wanna prevent them from capping out. Obviously that, that, that would be a huge problem. So putting shots into the 4202, the WZ11114 is not capping out. So again, we're not in a huge rush here. Um, but I am just going to keep driving forwards because I want to get damage. See, I'm worried that the E100 in the south is going to die because obviously if the Scorpion and the T95 and stuff start to push into me, uh, eventually they're going to start pressuring me and I don't want that. So I'm pushing into them because I want to do that before the E100 dies, but we're not in a huge rush yet. I'm just expecting him not to make it. So there's that. Now, in this case, you can see I'm doing it sort of carefully. I know I've got a damaged gun. I do have armor on this crew, so it's not a huge deal for me just yet. You're gonna see I'm gonna start trusting my teammates a bit more than I should right here, and I'm pushing into four tanks. Now, 
this is this is a mistake that I commonly make, and I think it's relevant to talk about because a lot of the times I think my teammates think the same way I do, <laughs> and and the real and what I'm learning is that they don't. So you can see we've got three TDs. I'm thinking let's crush these guys because that E100 is not going to win against the T95 and and the other three tanks down there. You can see he's a one shot. They're all full HP. I'm thinking we should crush the people in bad positions before that happens. And uh, <laughs> it's it's going to cost me here. So you can see I'm pushing into the scent, finish him off. They now have three tanks that I have to deal with, near over like 3,000 hit points. And I'm just going to try to deal with this by myself. This is a mistake. And this is why I say positioning, where you put yourself when, is the most important skill in what. Because I'm making a, a bad play here. I'm being too aggressive for who I for the context of this game. So you can see I'm looking for shots. In the end, this is going to cost me. I've done 4k damage, missed an easy shot. Uh, I haven't committed to them yet. I noticed the M41 or M4A1 rev to my side. I take a hit here, and uh, the MX30B puts a shot into him. And and this is why this was a bad position. You can see this 30B is in a fine position, or he was, right? Nothing was pressuring him. The way where I put myself screwed me over here. It's not about... Uh, you know, minimal like armor usage and things like that. When I put someone behind my tank, that's my fault. This WZ had rear shots on me, so I'm trying to mitigate that. And you can see I'm doing that by backing up because I want to put this in between myself and him. So, you know, I put myself in a bad position. Now I have to deal with that. You can see I'm dealing with the 54, uh, 50, the T54. The 30B kills him. Great job to him. I'm looking for shots in the WZ. This is all just brawling, I guess. I'm trying to be as you know, safe as I can given the bad play that I've made. I know the IS-4 is aiming my commander's hatch, and this is ultimately going to be where I die. Because <laughs> I make the same mistake again. I'm going to push this IS-4 eventually now that the M4 dies, because I sort of expect the MX-30B to, considering the way he just yellowed the IS-4. And um, I make a miscalculation. I sort of trusted this guy a bit too much, and, and that's, that's on me, right? So you can see I'm pushing this IS-4. I'm sort of expecting the AMX-30 to help. I make a bit of a misplay there. I block the AMX-30's shot for a bit. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it ends up killing me. So that's the end game. But I think the, the main lesson in this was deciding to go back to base. I'm amazed. Like, if you look at our map, our E100 is still alive. But to, to me, I think this video is going to be helpful because you have to look at it from... Uh, you have to try to simplify it down, right? The reason you have to go back to base is because you won't get on your cap before they will get on yours to, to really simplify it. And I mean, hopefully hopefully that's helpful to everyone out there. So yeah, let's go take a look at the end plates and uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty, so I couldn't get the end plates to work, but it's fine. I don't really think they matter. I ended up doing 5,100 damage. It was a win, etc., uh, etc. Et so what you can see happened was we were on the north spawn. I ended up going to the nine line, which is a decision I made based on what I saw in the enemy team lineup. And then I decided to try to push through. Now, this is my instinct. When I see someone in a four and it's just a singular tank, I want to push my side instead of driving all the way back to base to go to deal with that singular tank. So I saw that they were pressuring or about to pressure a cap circle, and my instinct was to go pressure theirs as quickly as I could. Now, the, the, the turning point is when I saw on the map that they had, I don't know, a ton of tanks in this area. They had a couple tanks here. And, and really, they outnumbered us. So when they're already in this position, and, and we have, I don't know, four TDs in one square right up here, or I think we had three. I'm using the medium tank icon, but it makes sense. When we had three TDs back here, I mean, obviously, they're going to have very little difficulty just sort of getting onto our cap. There's cover. I, from my understanding, that there is cover on the cap circle. So I was actually pretty worried about... Uh, you know them getting on the cap circle so what i did was i went back to base the 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 like I, i'll say it again the deciding factor is can i push onto their their cap before they get onto mine and when they're right here and they have huge numbers the answer is obviously going to be a no and then if you continue to look at the context i mean they had camping tds we really didn't have any tds here preventing that they were all here they had given up the cap circle effectively um Meanwhile, it's very likely that they had, you know, they have TDs here, and as you saw, they did have a full HP T95 and things like that, who would have made it very, very difficult for me to push into their base. So, you the, you have to make informed decisions with this game. That's how it works. You have to look at what is likely to happen. I mean, sometimes you're not going to be right, but the reality is, if if TDs normally camp here and they have a T95 and a couple other unlit TDs, 
there's going to be TDs right here. You, you can just assume that. So I had to look at the whole context as a game or like in, in this map where everyone was likely to, meet, to be, I made an educated decision and I went back to base and ultimately I think my 5,100 damage or whatever, that I, and I did like 3K in this area. I don't actually remember what I did, where I did it, but um, the decision to go back to base and turning this replay into a 5,100 damage game, I think really, really helped my team. So... Yeah, I also think mentioning the mistake that I made should be helpful because by going into here when my team wasn't in a position to help me, I made it impossible for me to, you know, expect to win. The MX-30B ended up throwing his, like, helping me a lot. I misplayed off of what I saw from him, but this this play should never have happened, just, just to let you guys know. So, yeah, I mean, I hope this video was helpful. If you want to see more, be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button, and I hope to see you around. Later, guys. Bye-bye.